All right, so we are going to be getting into Module 7. Module 7 is all about communication. It is a kind of it's a common sense module, but the reality is communication is probably the most important skill you can learn out of any of these chapters. Yes, it's important to know the tools and all these other things, but communication is how you're going to learn them. So if you're a good communicator and you get out to the job force, no matter what it is, no matter what career, if you can communicate well, um, you'll do the best because you'll be able to learn faster and also then communicate and you can be put in charge of other people because you can communicate how to do things, right? So this module is probably the most important, even though it's the most common sense. So we're going to move through it. So objectives is make you a better communicator. Performance task, I give you oral directions and then you are going to follow them. So basically what we've been doing in assignments, anything that I have a video, that's basically what we're doing. Essential skills, they want you to be able to listen well, speak well, read well, and write well. All are important parts of communication. All right, so here's probably the most important thing to know in this whole chapter, is how the communication process works, right? It is a cycle, and if you take any of these boxes out, communication fails, it falls apart. You need these things to, in order to communicate. So the sender is the one who has the message to say, this is the messenger. So right now, this is me. I'm communicating this PowerPoint in this chapter to you. So the sender is the one who has the information. And now the sender has to choose how is he going to get that communication to the receiver. So this can be through an email. It can be through verbally talking. It can be a phone call. It can be a text. It can be writing a book, uh, making a PowerPoint, making a video, whatever it is. That is your channel of communication. And you got to choose that wisely. What is going to be the best way for me to get my message across, right? If the message is there's a fire in the building, we need to get out, probably sending a group text isn't the best idea, right? The best way to communicate that is to pull the fire alarm. That is a means of communication, right? Because it, it dictates what to do. It shows the urgency. Or if something else, I can get back to it whenever, send the email, send the text, and then you can get it back to it at your time. If you need an immediate response, probably make the phone call instead of texting because texting, you never know when they're going to get it. If their phone's ringing, they'll answer the call. It's a faster communication. So you want to choose your channel based on your message and how important it is. So then the receiver, this is the guy who is receiving the message. This is the one who's hearing it or reading it, right? So this is the receiver. So the next step to complete the cycle, it has to happen. Otherwise, communication isn't one straight line. Because if information just goes to this and nothing happens, probably wasn't received, right? He never actually got the message. So to make sure it happens, you have to get some form of feedback. To complete communication, there has to be some form of feedback. And so this could be nonverbal. It could just be nodding your head and following along. It can be completing the task you were asked to do. It can be responding with your own opinion or responding with an email. Some form of feedback is needed to verify that everything was communicated well. The best way um, to give feedback is if you're giving directions, let's say, for example, they ask you to do something, the best thing to do is paraphrase it, meaning say it in your own words, don't say it verbatim, but say it how you think it, back to them to verify that you have the information correct, because this is their chance to correct it if it goes wrong. And so a conversation goes back and forth. These arrows, the cycle is happening, it just changes directions, right? So instead of the sender and receiver basically flip away, flip spots, and the arrows just change direction. And that is how a basic dialogue happens back and forth, right? And so this is, I mean, if you think how important this is, this is why our country is a mess right now is we can't communicate. One side yells at the other, and then the other side yells back. But there is an actual communication. No one's listening. No one's actually hearing. The communication channel is just anger, and it's not getting across, right? So we need to be good communicators, and that solves a lot of problems. Just a lot of things in life, it's a communication issue. A lot of families that get broken apart and fight, it's just communication. It's not that anyone's actually doing anything. It's just that they're failing to communicate what they want. Lots of times, bosses and employees get really upset with each other just because there's a failure of communication, right? Usually, our issues have to do with communication, not actual doing anything. It's just failure to get our ideas across or our opinion or just what's going on, how we're feeling. So this is critical just to being a good human, but then critical to being a good worker out in the job force. So... The book refers to anything that interferes with this as noise. 
Our world is full of distractions, full of things that'll want to stop this progress, right? And so from sender communication channel, technical glitches, right? Sometimes that happens. I get these videos out late or something because it fails to upload. There's a noise, a interference that say receiver, you're on your phone, you're not paying attention, you're out, you're daydreaming about something else, right? There's all kinds of things that can get in the way. And so noise is anything that'll stop. And on a job site, it actually can be literal noise. It can be, think about when we're in the shop and we have all the tools running at the same time in the desk collection, it gets pretty loud. We can't hear each other talk. And even now we all have to wear these masks and masks make it hard to talk, make it hard um, just to be loud enough for people to hear. So noise is any interference that can get in the way. And sometimes something that we don't often think about, but it is, is maybe we just don't like somebody, right? If we don't like them, we might not listen to them. Say there's a teacher you just really hate because they failed you, and then they're trying to tell you important information. You just tune it out. You don't care. And that is interference. Communication is not happening. It might be important. You might need to know it. They might be apologizing even. But if you don't listen, right, if you let that interference get in the way, communication never happens, and the cycle can't be completed. Right, so all these things need to happen and be, pay attention to the different ways and things that are getting in the way. Nonverbal communication. We probably, as humans, we communicate almost more this way than we do actually saying or writing anything down. Nonverbal is how we know how someone's feeling, how they're, um, how they consider themselves. There's all kinds of different cues that have nothing to do with what we say about, um, but they are communicating a message, right? And so these are big ones that the book points out. Um, and these have to do, if you want to go get a job, if you're going to go in an interview, if you show up to the job, all these things play a huge role in how well you're going to move up the chain, how well your boss is going to treat you, um, and just the expectations and privileges that you are given just in life. Right? And so a big one is grooming. Are you clean? Do you keep yourself looking good? Right? It's not just because um, you want to stay healthy, but it's also has a big deal of what you're communicating. If you say, I don't care about myself, I don't care about my well-being, then people are going to say, well, if you don't care about yourself, why should I care about you? Right? And so grooming has a big thing. It's just a little thing to do, but if you stay on top of it, it's communicating that you're confident and it's communicating that you care about yourself and you'll take responsibility. So how you dress. Again, this is super important. The world says dress however you want, do whatever you want. It's a lie. Right? You can't do that. You're getting judged by how you dress. So if you show up looking like a mess, right, people are going to assume, again, if you look like a mess, you must be a mess. Right? Because that's how you're choosing to present yourself. That is what you're communicating by what you dress. So on the job force, if you go out and you're in a trade, you show up on a construction site, you're wearing brand new J's, a clean white shirt, and some fancy new Nike sweatpants, guess what they're going to say? You're not prepared to work. You're not going to work hard because you're not ready for it. And they're just going to kick you off. Right? They'd rather hire someone who's willing to work. And this is, all you've done is communicate by how you dress, but you said, I don't care, I'm not here to work, right? So show up dressed, ready to work, have the appropriate attire. And this goes a long way with companies too. If a company, if the employees look good, if they have matching shirts, matching uniforms, standardized, this makes the company look good. So the company is communicating, we care about how we look like. We care, if we care about what the company looks like, we're going to care about what your finished product looks like. So dress is important. So I encourage you, find a company where the people, you look good. Don't just work for guys that have holes all over, uh, torn up shirts and all these things. Work for somebody who looks good, right? And so other things that communicate you might not think about. Is your room messy? Is your room clean? What does that say, right? What does that say about you? I don't care about, I don't care about my mess. I don't care about my condition. So it's just different things like that. How you use your time, what is that communicating? Are you on your phone all the time? It's saying my time's your telling your boss, your time's not important to me. It doesn't matter. Um, I can do what I want, right? So pay attention to how you're using your time. Are you wasting it? Your facial expressions, do you look happy, sad? Um, resting B phase is a real thing, right? Uh, it, just, they don't look like an approachable person, even if they're nice. Learn to practice having facial expressions just to make you look appealing. Your posture gesture, are you slouched? Are you always leaning? Do you look lazy? Um, are your arms folded across your chest? That means um, it's pretty standard, don't come near me. Even though if you're just trying to stay warm, what you're communicating by crossing arms is don't come near me. And then physical distance. This one's kind of weird this year with COVID because we have to stay far apart. But normally six feet is too far. It's that awkward distance. We want to be closer. But then we also know there's that bubble that you get too close, right? You get too close you're in someone's personal space and that's awkward. So we've got to learn these things. But this communicates so much more than what we say. Your message, if you do these things wrong, what you're saying gets lost. Again, if you're trying to, if you look a mess, 
you're not clean, but then you're trying to tell your employees, say you're a boss someday, and you're trying to tell your employees, make sure the job site stay clean. We want to take care of our client's stuff, but you look a mess. They're not going to care because what you're communicating isn't what's being shown. And you might even see that if someone's telling you to do something nice, um, but theirs, their example is a mess. You're not going to try, right? So make sure these match your message. Listening is also important. It's not just speaking, but you got to learn how to listen. This is where a lot of us fall. We don't, we don't have active listening ears, right? And so if someone's telling you something, make sure you're paying attention, especially on the job force. Don't make your boss repeat himself over and over again. If he tells you once, you should have it. Take notes if you need to, but make sure you're paying attention so you can do the job well. Again, this will move you up the ladder really fast. Active listening. So active listening is when you're participating in the communication cycle, right? There's that feedback block. That is the active part. You're doing something. So you're taking notes. You're nodding along. You're following. You're giving feedback. You're giving, you're paraphrasing what you're saying. And this is active listening. You should be doing this in school. If you want to succeed, why is school so boring? Because you're just passively letting the information hit you, right? Um, you aren't actively being part of it. School's a lot more fun if you participate in the learning. So that's answering the questions questions one teacher has, having being part of the discussion, taking notes. If you're actively engaged, you're doing something, right? And so it makes it better. So, and also that's just how you learn. That's how you hear things. You have to participate in it. You put yourself involved. And so to complete that cycle, you got to be active in your listening. Again, body language, you're going to be really, have a really happy message, but your body language says, I hate you. Uh, people aren't going to listen. Make sure your body language equals the message. Paraphrasing just means, uh, it just means you're using, saying it in your own words. So again, this is great feedback. Someone tells you to do some things. Now you're going to paraphrase what they said back to them to make sure you heard everything correctly. The effective speaker, basically, all this is saying, you want to be able to take your idea, your complex thought, and be able to communicate it clearly so someone else understands. That is an effective speaker. If what you have, what the idea, the information, if someone can hear it and understand, you've been effective. And so maintaining eye contact is huge. Um, as you're getting into the adult world in the job force, eye contact is what is expected. And that is shows that you're honest, right? Part of our theme is show up, work hard, be honest. People want to trust you and be able to just count on you. And if you aren't making eye contact, universally you assume, oh, they're lying to me, right? Because if you're lying, you can't, it's really hard to make eye contact. So it makes you look honest. It makes you look trustworthy, a good person, if you maintain eye contact when you talk to somebody. So practice this. The cashier at the store, everybody, make eye contact as you talk with them. Guidelines for phones. Again, follow what your company says. A lot of old school guys will be like, leave your phone in the truck, never get it out. I think that's a dumb idea because my boss called me on my phone all the time. That's how he communicated to let me know or if I had a question, he expected me to call him. But what it's saying is don't be on your phone playing a game um, instead of doing your work. Use it wisely. Use it within the boundaries that is given for you, um, and don't waste don't waste someone else's time. Work hard so then you can enjoy uh, the pay you're making and not losing your job, not getting fired. If you work hard now, you can play hard later, right? And so just use your phones responsibly, and clearly you just have to be careful. Pay attention. You're posting things online; they're permanent. If it's up online, it's never going away. So if you're taking pictures or things, make sure you're not ruining the company's um, name sake, right? Whatever you post it has a company attached to it. So be careful. Be wise in what you're posting. Don't post something on the Internet that's going to get you fired or in trouble 10 years down the road. Pay attention now. Because the cool, not cool, but a warning is that the bosses are looking at this these days. It's not just what's on your resume. Now they're going to check and they look into your social media accounts and they say, what has this kid been posting? Oh, look, he has 10 pictures of him getting drunk and smoking weed. We don't want to hire him. He's not a trustworthy character. Right? So be wise what you're posting, because people are looking at your social media accounts. This is part of your whole identity. Your resume is online. So be careful. Be wise in how you use your phone. Again, placing phone calls, just be clear. Um, if it's professional, something you want to start practicing is say your name. Say, hello, this is, like, if my phone rings here in my office, it's, hello, this is Mr. Rock. How can I help? Right? So be paying attention um, to who, what they say, and then also just introduce yourself well and be professional. And that is part one. So communication is key um, to success, to in life.
communication is the main thing that uh, just makes the world go smoothly is are we communicating things well? If you want to be a leader, learn to communicate. Um, it's, it's critical.